Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm collaborating with Katie from Hot Pink Zebra Polish and we decided to do a set based on each other's YouTube handle including some 3D artwork. So that means I would do something zebra related with some 3D and then Katie would do something swan related on her set of nails. I'm going to link Katie's video down below in my description box so be sure to check out her video as well. But in the meantime let's get started with my zebra nails. So I'm going to start this design off with the middle finger and I'm going to paint under my skin by Madame Glam on the entire nail. I'm doing this because this finger is going to be a French and I'm using this colour to imitate what the nail bed colour will be. Then I'm going to use rainbow colours, pretty in pink, blood orange, mimosa, neon lime green, are you indigo and aqua blue to create my rainbow ombre. This is such an easy design to do and it's so effective with all those beautiful colours mixing into each other. All you need to do is dab a little bit of each colour onto the nail. Here I'm only placing it where the French part of the nail will be and then I'm going to use my ombre brush and try and blend these colours together. Now keep in mind this blend does not by any means have to be perfect because on top of it we're going to put the zebra stripes and that will help blend in any faults or mistakes that we may have done. So before moving on to blending another colour you need to wipe your brush so you don't transfer a, a foreign colour into the two colours which you're trying to blend. Now I'm going to do two coats of this so once I'm happy with the first blend I cure it in my LED light for a minute and then I repeat the same process by adding all the colours to the same section as I did before. Once all the colours are on and I'm ready to blend, I'm just going to use my ombre brush and do the blend again. But this time I felt I wanted it not to be as blended as much as it was before. I kind of like the streaky look as you can see here. So I didn't blend it as much and I left it more raw, if you can use that word. Once that's done and I'm happy with the rawness of my blend, I cure it and I can move on to the next step. The next step involves using some black art gel to draw the zebra lines and here I'm just placing some on my little palette and I'm going to use my Ugly Ducklings Detailer 2 brush to draw all the zebra stripes. And just like the irregular ombre that we did before where it didn't have to be perfect, these stripes don't have to be perfect either. In fact, the more wavy and irregular they are, the better the zebra print will look. You can use a reference picture of a, a real life zebra if you like to try and draw the lines so they look more zebra-ish. Um, but here I'm just winging it, throwing some lines together. The only rule of thumb I follow is making the outer edges thicker than the inner tapered point of the line. I give my stripes a flash cure and then I border my smile line with some black gel polish. With all the line work complete on this nail I cure them for a full minute and then I add my final top coat and cure that again for another minute and that nail is complete. It's just ready for some bling which I will add later on. So now that leaves the thumb, the pointer and the little pinky which I need to do in exactly the same manner. The only difference with those nails is that I'm doing the entire nail rather than just a French. And I'm repeating the same process as I did with the other nail. And now it's time for the 3D element of our collaboration. As a base for the ring finger I'm painting Pretty in Pink by Madame Glam. Two coats, curing those and top coating as well. And then I'm using Miss You Australia's 4D gel in Snow Queen to build up my little zebra. So this fabulous 3D idea I actually got from an artist on Instagram called Naho Nail and they did this gorgeous little Tom and Jerry 3D peekaboo nails where the character is peeking over the nails and it looks like the character is hanging on for dear life onto the nail. I think it's so gorgeous. I just had to recreate it but I never had um, a, a, an excuse to do it. And now with Katie, thanks Katie, I got to actually complete this little desire of mine. So naturally Katie's YouTube channel being called Hot Pink Zebra Polish, I decided to create this cute little zebra hanging off a hot pink nail. So to create the zebra out of 4D gel you need to break it up into sections. I first started with the body of the zebra and then I got it into the shape I wanted and cured. Now I'm moving on to the little legs and even the little legs need to be done in small sections at a time. 
The easiest way to do it is to break off beads which are roughly similar and roll them both in simultaneously so you get them almost the same size. So here I'm placing on the thighs and once the bead is on the actual nail you can use your little 4D brush and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to further pat it into place. Once you've placed a body part in a position that you're happy with and it looks exactly how you want it, be sure to cure it for a full minute in your LED light so you don't accidentally move it or knock it as you're working on the rest of the zebra. Here I'm bending little rolled out sausages of 4D gel to place as arms on my little zebra and getting them into position. Once I'm happy with the position they're in, I will cure them and they will be locked in place. So once I've cured my little zebra thus far, I need to go back with some white acrylic and fill in those little gaps which were left behind as I joined my body parts together. This includes the knees and the little behind of the zebra. I'm not going to worry about the shoulders because I need them to have definition so it looks like shoulders look, holding the little body up over the nail. So I'm filling in the butt cracks, <laughs> not exactly the butt cracks but sort of the hip join parts. <laughs> I can't believe how freely that word came out of my mouth. So once all my acrylic is in place I roll out a, a long thin sausage of 4D gel as the tail of the zebra and place it into the acrylic just before it dries and that will hold it in place. With all that complete I need to move on to the head of the zebra and this too is done in two sections. As you can see I've got the skull there and I'm just adding the snout and once I've cured that I, I then use acrylic again to blend in those lines so the snout doesn't look like a foreign body in front of the zebra's face. Now the part I struggled most with was building the ears of this little zebra and the best technique I found was to place beads of acrylic on the head, wait for it to dry up a little, press into it as if I was pressing a 3D flower and just before it completely dried lift up that little pressed ear off the head and it would further dry into a pointy ear. Then I use white acrylic as well to build up the mane of the zebra and once that's done I can start painting zebra stripes. So for the details that I need to paint on the zebra, I need to use black, pink and white. The black is from En Vogue and the pink and white is from Glitz Accessories and such. I'll be using my Ugly Duckling painting brushes and I'm going to start off with the black stripes. So if you notice in real life pictures of zebra, the stripes actually continue straight through to the mane of the animal. So that's where I'm starting and then I'm basically working off of that for as, as far as the rest of the stripes down the body are concerned. So I've started on the left side and working my way down and once I've done that I will move on to the other side of the animal. And again these stripes do not have to be perfect, they do not all have to be uniform so the more irregular they are the better they will look. Except for this one. <laughs> I put a little X to be the little anus of the zebra just like you see in some animations. <laughs> so I'm drawing black on the little hooves as well and the snout will be black as well and then I'm going to start detailing the face. Here I'm just outlining the eyes of the zebra. I'll be adding some pupils and some lashes and if you may notice on the ears I've painted a little bit of pink in them. Also for a little smile I'm going to add a little tiny pink smile to this zebra because we've got one happy little zebra. To seal in all my lines and painted face, I cure it in my LED light for a full minute, then apply matte top coat, cure that for a minute, wipe off the tacky layer and then apply no wipe top coat on the pink nail because as I was working on the zebra, it just dulled a little bit. And here is my completed adorable tiny little zebra hanging off the edge of the nail. I am so glad I had the opportunity to create this little creature. Now the only thing left to complete this set entirely is, let's say it all together, bling. Yes, naturally I'm going to add some bling to this. With the big ones that you see here, I'm securing with some acrylic to make sure they stay in place. So once you place it onto the acrylic, it tends to ooze out the sides. Just use your brush to either tuck it back under or remove it completely. 
And just be patient and wait for the big stones to harden into the acrylic. And now for the smaller stones, I'm just using no wipe top coat to press them into because this set is just for a video and I don't really need these to be permanent or, you know, make sure they don't fall off. So into some uh, wet no wipe top coat, I'm pressing all the little crystals which I want. And when they're all in the position which I'm happy with, I will cure them and then this set will be ready for reveal. And here is my completed zebra set for my collaboration with Katie and her channel Hot Pink Zebra Polish. What do you think of my design? Be sure to let me know down below in the comments what you thought of it. And while you're at it, don't forget to also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future uploads I may make. And on the topic of collaboration, don't forget to head over to Katie's channel. I've linked her video in my description box. And if you click on it, you can watch her video and see the amazing 3D swans she created. Her hand painting is second to none. I wish I was as good as her with hand painting. She is incredibly talented, not only in hand painting, but in nail art in general and that's why she made it to top four in NTNA season seven. So give her a huge congratulations down below in the comments and also on her video as well. So don't forget to head over there and watch that one too. So that's it for today's video for me, my lovelies. I really enjoyed this collaboration. Thank you, Katie, for suggesting this. I had a blast and I'm up for it again in future if you want to. And that's it for today's video. But in the meantime, if you would like to watch another video, YouTube recommends this one for you. Well, I recommend this one. Which one will you choose? I'll see you all next time. Bye!